Hi. Today I'm talking about TK, GUI bindings for the Go language that have been published quite recently by Modern C. And they have one particular feature that sets them apart from other GUI bindings. That is they are CGO free. So how do they achieve that? I don't know exactly. I think they actually translate to Go like they did with SQLite. So they also have an SQLite binding that is basically pure Go. And here we have a GUI that is basically pure Go. And it's easy to use. Now you probably have heard about TK in the combination TCL, TK. TCL is a programming language and it's usually used in combination with TK to create graphical user interface uh, applications. Now, TCL and TK are very old. They have been around for a very long time, at least since the 90s. And they have this reputation of being a bit outdated, a bit quirky, uh, like, you know, small talk user interfaces or something like that. But actually, this is based on TK9, which is the latest iteration of TK, of this toolkit. And that is quite feature complete. Uh, if I tried it out and was astonished myself what you can do with it and how mature it is. Here you can see, for instance, standard menus with different theming. It draws its own widgets, but there are different themes and you can adjust the theme to something you like. And the author here has actually included the Azure Light theme port and you can port your own theme and create your own theme. That's quite important because the default theme is basically motif theme. So it's it's very old and very uh, outdated. You cannot use that for anything. But the Azure Light theme is quite nice, a bit standard, uh, flat design with some shadows, but um, it's not unusual and looks fine for desktop. Now, this framework is only available for desktop platforms, so it's not going to work on mobile, unfortunately, because TK is not available in general on mobile. There are ways of running um, TK user interfaces on Android by using an application for it, but this is not the usual embedded way and it's not going to work with Go. Right, here is a typical application. You can see you create a menu, you add the commands, you add the accelerator keys. The commands here are functions in Go and Basically, you can add this closure and the closure will be called if you uh, hit the key or select the menu item. Now, what's astonishing about this is uh, the text editor support. At least I was quite um, amazed by this because it's uh, not common to have that, that much control in a text editor interface or widget um, for Go GUIs. So here you can see it has different fonts, it has different colors, different backgrounds. It can even have a stippling of the background. So this little um, example here is, they call it a stippling. Uh, and the line over strike, which is actually strike through, I would say, and various other effects. You can even have basic paragraph justification and you can even embed images into paragraphs. That's quite amazing in my opinion and what's even better is that you can define your own tags that are then styled according to your wishes here you can see for instance that you declare the tag you you don't have to declare it it's basically any string is is uses used as a tag but then you configure it and you add uh, for instance the background color the border width is zero here and the stipple here or the font, or the justification, and then you can apply these tags as if they were XML tags. So for instance, very big here makes the font very big. And you could have logical tags, of course. And you can have tags that are not just user-defined, you can associate some data with these tags on the Go side, of course because they have unique names, or you can give them unique names if you want to. That's pretty cool. 
calculator example, font support. Uh, and also it has a GNU blot library support if GNU blot is installed. So if you have that installed on Linux, that's very common. Then you can use plots. I don't know how well this works on Windows, but it should work if you have it installed, but you need to make sure that it's installed here. GNU blot 5.4 uh, is needed. But then it's very nice. And what's also very special is that um, the author included a little tech interpreter, so you can even write formulas using tech syntax. It only supports the very basic tech, no LaTeX or anything like that, but you can write mathematical formulas and get them as image and embed them, for instance, into your text widget, or here it's an image. And you can embed it into labels, as you can see here. That's insane in my opinion. Pretty cool. Now you have different buttons. I can show you the demo very quickly. If we go here to examples and we can run the demo here. Go run demo. Should work. No, that was wrong. It was nonsense, of course. Go. Right, and it opens all the different demo windows on my machine that you have seen on the web page and even more. You can style the buttons, for instance, as you like. As you can see here, it has image support for embedded images and it has these font supports and these are the system fonts here. It reads them in no time. And I tested the editor. It's quite astonishing. It is very performant. You can edit very large files. They are in memory, of course, but if they fit into memory, there is not going to be any performance problem, at least not in my tests. That's quite astonishing. You could, for instance, use them to build a little text editor with your own text. You can use it for spell correction, style correction, and so on. This text system is quite useful, in my opinion. Now, what's interesting about this is, unfortunately, you cannot save the content of rich text fields into your own data structure or, you know, serialization. What you have to do is, if you want to save it to disk, you have to write your own parser. Let me show you. Here's my own version of the demo, and it dumps this. That's the dump command of the text widget. And as you can see here, these are strings. Part of them are the text strings, and then they have these markers text for the text string. Then that's the position. Then you have tag on, then my user defined tag. That's the position of the tag. Then you have an embedded text tag. Then you have the text. Then you have the position of the text tag. Then you have tag off and again the tag, and so on. So it's easy readable and easy to, to uh, parsable, but you have to write your own parser for the import and export, which seems quite doable. One thing you need to be aware, though, is that the documentation is still kind of sparse because it's auto-translated. Of course, the author didn't write the complete documentation, that would have been crazy. So here it's auto-translated, uh, mostly applies for the Go part, and it has these options that are unfortunately always the empty interface value, right here, any. And you have to experiment a little bit with what, what works and what doesn't work, which is kind of odd, right? And can be a source of potential dynamic runtime errors. Because if you, for instance, use a string and it expects a number, it will just panic. But you can test all this, of course, before you use it, and then it's fine. Now, sometimes, let me look for an example. Sometimes this documentation refers to the TCL page about this, so TCL TK page. And if you look up there, it's going to be hard to understand if you don't know any TCL. If you're familiar with TCL, it's all very easy, of course. But if not, 
that's going to be hard to understand. Another thing that is also worth mentioning is that TCL and TK applications are not updated very often. So what you get is probably for a long time um, what you have and you will not have an update to this framework every year or so. Well, I think TK9 took a long time to be developed and that's what you get, basically. So let me summarize. What do I think about this framework? I think it's great for desktop development. Obviously, mobile support is not there, so you cannot use it for that. It's a nice choice if you want to create a quick and dirty solution, so to say, and still want to have all kinds of user interface elements that perhaps the more native Go solutions don't have yet. So if you want to have all menus, accelerator keys, um, the support for images, the text edit with all the bells and whistles that other frameworks don't have, or you have to pay like for Qt, for instance. And um, for that, it's quite a nice choice. It will not give you the full platform native look and feel. You will have to choose a theme and you might have to create your own theme for your own branding, so to say. But other than that, it's a nice choice. And it's used to be... Um, uh, kind of a Swiss army knife or secret weapon for people who have to develop, say, business-to-business -business applications very fast. Uh, some people still use TCLTK for commercial development of applications where the user interface doesn't have to be so fancy. So if you just need forms and windows with buttons and edit fields, this is a very nice choice and it's very fast and easy to use. So for that, I can really recommend it. And it, the great thing about it, it's CGO free. So you can cross compile without any problems. That's very rare, especially if you don't use any other packages that use CGO, of course. Otherwise, it's not an advantage. Right. That's it for today. I hope you liked this video and see you next time when I talk about the next GUI framework for Google. Bye.